serious. Okay, this is you're gonna love this. That's what happened. The camera pans, and I was like this. No, I didn't do that. And we should have won. But one of my teammates got his hands caught in the cookie jar and just wouldn't listen to any of us when we told him, let go of the ball, you idiot. So I discovered that I was in the team from the, the lady behind the counter. You know, I regard myself more of a saint than anything else because of the relationship I have. Hi, I'm James Haskell, and these are my Jersey Tales. Outstanding play by Haskell. Bill again. Strong display from Haskell, certainly in the loose. Like any good adventure, you need to start from the beginning. Now, my very first shirt was actually a Maidenhead Rugby Club shirt. Now, like most of my kit, it's in my mum's and dad's loft. Um, I know a lot of you might think I would have a house plastered in my shirts, memorabilia, trophies, statues to myself, but unfortunately, I actually don't, but I don't want to break her. Your reality, but this is one of the first shirts I um, I ever played with. It from Papawick School in Ascot. It's where I kind of um, started to really fall in love with rugby. I, I'll be honest with you, I never wanted to be a rugby player. I wanted to be in the SAS or drive a digger, um, but I ended up, you know, getting in, going to good schools that played rugby. The competitive spirit took over, and then when I trialled for England under 16s, I got all the way to the final trial. I didn't get in. I. I wanted to come back stronger and I started training harder and a bit like a Rocky montage. I came back bigger and stronger and got on that path and thought it seemed like a fun opportunity. And basically, you know, 16, 17 years later, I was still doing it. This is a number eight shirt, but it took me a while to venture into the number eight position. Um, I was actually, to be honest with you, playing prop for a bit, which is terrifying. Um, but my hygiene and intelligence levels were too good, so they got me out of the front row. So this shirt means a lot to me. I can't imagine I was ever this small but apparently I was, but it does actually resemble the kind of shirt I would wear on a night out now, which is kind of quite alarming. But anyway, so that's my Papawit shirt. Next, of course, we have to go with Wasps, my first professional club. Now this jersey um, holds uh, kind of a lot of uh, pride, but also some like utter devastation in it. It's the Aviva Premiership final, Wasps versus Exeter, where if you remember rightly or wrongly, it went all the way to extra time. And I think we played 116 minutes of rugby, which I played every minute of that game. Um, and we should have won. We should have won before the final uh, whistle. But one of my teammates got his hands caught in the cookie jar and just wouldn't listen to any of us when we told him, please, please, let go of the ball, you idiot. And he didn't. They got a penalty. They kicked it. They drew. They went to extra time. And then, like all good games, it came down to a scrum. One of our props ran out of gas, flopped on the floor, and they kicked it and, um, and won. But... I had a much, uh, much loved career at Wasps. I was with them for, for such a long time, 12 years in total. Yeah, for me, it was an amazing opportunity to play with all my heroes, Lawrence Dalio, Joe Worsley, to be part of an incredible back row. I captain Wasps um, for a period of time, which was amazing. Um, Di Young was brave enough to put me as captain. A lot of other people, especially the media and fans, thought I was you know, potentially not necessarily the man for the job, but actually, I, I really grew into that, that jersey. And I, even when I wasn't captain, obviously, I was a, an important leader in that, in that team. Sadly. I wasn't captain when we reached the final. We, we you know, we fell short. So, you know, or went so close the year before, um, but fell short. And then obviously, um, Joe Launchbury, old launchers, was captain at the time. But trust me, if we'd won this, he would have got elbowed in the ribs, and I would have been lifting the, the trophy. But we didn't. We just got um, runners-up medals, which are awful, really. In the words of Ricky Bobby, "If you ain't first, you're last." So never mind. Um, the next shirt off the rail is, of course, the white shirt of England. Okay, so everybody has this romantic story about um, how you got you know, a, a notified for your first England cap. I was driving out of Wasps training ground and a former teammate of mine shouted out the window, oi, something, something, which we can't possibly say, you're in the England squad. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, check your email. So I went on my I, um, email account and I think, I'm gonna be honest with you, my email account at the time was something like hotmail.com, which nobody obviously ever emailed. And I went online, logged in, had loads of spam mail and found this email. And lo and behold, at the bottom of the email, uh, it said, <laughs> congratulations to this squad, see you on Sunday. And there it was like, you know, Lawrence Alio, Joe Worsley, Matt Dawson at hotmail.com. <laughs> hotmail and um, that was how I found out. And it basically said, drive down to, to Bath to um, meet up on a Sunday. So I drove down there, barely made it down in my Nan's Vauxhall Astra. So I got my kit, I was like, this is amazing. Wheeled up to the hotel, went in and the lady was there. She said, what's your name? I said, 
James Haskell, she checked in, she went, oh, just stay in the two nights, is it? So I discovered that I was in the team from the, the lady behind the counter. So thank you very much to that lady at the Bar Spa Hotel. So the first shirt I ever wore is framed at my parents' house um, in the downstairs bathroom. So when people are relieving themselves, they can look at, look at that, which is odd, but nice. Look, my debut 2007, in the Six Nations against Wales, away at the Millennium Stadium, as it was called then. They stupidly let them close the roof. So the volume on the field was like nothing um, I've ever heard. You know what, I could not stop smiling. I even did the cheeky wink to the camera when they came past, which somehow I managed to get away with, but because social media wasn't really a thing, um, if I'd done that now, everyone would be like, ah, we hate you. They did that anyway, but, but luckily it, I didn't add fuel to the flames in those days. You know, what a place to go and, and, and make your debut in the fire of Wales. We narrowly lost, and I tell you what, I've never heard volume like it when we were five points behind them, three metres from their line. It was like a force pressing on your head. It was honest to God, you couldn't concentrate, you couldn't focus, and they become like a 16th man on that, on that occasion. So rule number one, never let the Welsh have the roof closed. I obviously didn't go out and stash to chat her up because you can't do that. That's like a massive cardinal sin. Now, I bet you never thought you'd see me picking one of these up. And to be honest you, neither did I. <laughs> Chloe! No, I think she's coming on the side. <laughs> Fine. And so yeah, the Highlanders was amazing, but they're not the brightest down there and they will try to blow your house up. Oh, I'll tell you what, there is one shirt as well in terms of my, my lovely wife, who obviously we're you know, a feature in everything we do. But I was actually on England duty when I met, us, met her for our first date. I convinced her to come and meet me um, for a coffee to talk about a supplement range and her being the face of it. I did have a supplement range, but it was just basically to lull her um, into um, coming for a date. And I actually was playing, um, I don't know, I was playing, I think it was Australia or South Africa uh, that weekend. So I was, it was on England duty and I just nipped out for a coffee to meet her on my day off. I obviously didn't go out and stash to chat her up because you can't do that. That's like a massive cardinal sin. That's the one thing you've got to understand about rugby is we get all this amazing kit, but you can never wear it because you look sad. <laughs> So one of the shirts I really want to talk to you about is the Grand Slam Decider game. Um, you know, I obviously had a lot of games for England. How many? 77. Probably should have had more, but don't worry about it. Um, and basically that game for me was huge because we'd lost um, three Grand Slam Deciders before, twice against Ireland uh, and once against Wales where we absolutely got pumped. And that was my 50th cap game and I got brought on for five minutes at the end once we were something like 30 points down and I didn't get an opportunity to run out in front of my, um, this is quite, sounding quite bitter, isn't it? But I didn't get a chance to run out in front of my, uh, the, the home crowd, which would have been nice, but at least I got 50 caps. Anyway, Eddie Jones came in, worked his magic, and we had an opportunity to win a Grand Slam game against France, in France. Went out and played, we won the game. Nobody can take that away from us. And it was 2016, it was such a big moment. Incredibly special. Number seven, I know so many people are like, you're not a seven. Turns out I am, and a Grand Slam winning one. So that was great. Um, and then there was, of course, one more, that I want to talk about. I'll hook that on there. Uh, one more I want to talk about, which was uh, the tour to Australia, 2016. On the back of the Grand Slam, absolutely loved it, smashed it, folded up, poke up like a travel map, which, which to be honest with you, was one thing I ever did better than him because he was 10,000 times better than me as a player and amazing, but it was a good iconic moment for me. Won the game, we did a little break, pulled off my first ever sidestep um, and got an opportunity to to win that series and won it 3-0, did something we'd never done before. Uh, I obviously, unfortunately, you know, injured, which ultimately ended my career a couple of years later. I was never quite the same player after that, unfortunately, but I gave it all out on the field, so this shirt means, uh, means a lot to me. Um, okay, let's go on to da -da -da -da, this. Now, I bet you never thought you'd see me picking one of these up. And to be honest with you, neither did I. See, the last Lions tour, I didn't get selected. Initially, Billy uh, Vanapola had to go down. They called me up, um, you know, I was blown away by it. I obviously never made it as a, as a test line and it's a bit difficult personally for all my bravado and jokes I've done on this video. I would never regard myself as like a proper line because I didn't play a test game, but I did play four times for them in the midweek games um, and gave everything I possibly could. It was the best tour I've ever been on. When you spend all your life beating up other players and them trying to beat you up from other countries, you don't really get a chance to bond with them. It's not like the old days um, and it was nice to spend kind of, uh, you know, 12 weeks with a set of players, which, you know, you never wouldn't have normally done, going for coffees, finding out players you thought you were definitely gonna hate. And a lot of people thought they were gonna hate me when I, you know, went over there. Apparently when they saw I'd replaced Billy, everyone was like, oh my God, not Haskell, he's a nightmare. But I made some friends for life, still speak to them now, was incredible, uh, was such a, an honor. This is one of the greatest shirts you can ever, ever have. Um, 
and for me to wear it was was you know mind-boggling. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I got to play against the Blues, the uh, the Chiefs, the Highlanders, um, and the Hurricanes, and that was incredibly um, incredibly special for me. And uh, it's something that I will always always treasure. Okay, so. I obviously did a tour around the world. Uh, I played in every single league going apart from um, the one they play in Wales, Scotland and Ireland because it just rains all the time and I don't want to go there. Um, and basically one of, the, one of the places I went to was the Highlanders. This is a Highlander shirt. Um, it's actually a Highlander shirt that I uh, played against playing for the Lions, but um, the sentiment is still there. You know, it was an incredible opportunity. I played in Paris for Stade Francais, some of the craziest shirts ever, but they're at my parents' house, I can't show you. I then went to um, Japan, the Rico Black Rams, and played out there with Ma Nonu and guys like that, and that was life-changing. But the Highlanders was probably the most pure rugby experience I've ever had. Everybody in New Zealand wants to be a rugby player. Um, it's their number one sport over here. We're kind of third and fourth sport down the list. And for me, it was, um, Oh, sorry. Chloe! No, I think she's gone around the side. Fine. Um, actually, shut the up! I love you! Oh, she's coming back now. I'll wait until she's gone. Um, basically, went over to Australia, played the Reds, had a couple of days on the smash, landed back, I invited everyone back to my house. They're like animals over there, trashed my house. And so yeah, the Highlanders was amazing, but they're not the brightest down there and they will try to blow your house up. Um, okay, so the last shirt I'm gonna to talk to you about today is my Northampton shirt. Now, as I said, I went around the world and I went back to Wasps for six years. Um, I decided to sign for Northampton. These guys were amazing. They, they, they took me in when nobody else wanted me. I obviously only got to play five games for them before my body let itself down, but um, I learned a lot. It was amazing to see the facilities and the intensity and the heritage. And, you know, I got a chance to play with Dylan Hartley and Courtney Laws and Tom Wood. It's the last jersey I ever wore. Hopefully my experience and kind of passion uh, and professionalism help people off the field. And um, I wish them the best of luck and they'll always be, you know, I regard myself more of a saint than anything else. Thank you so much again for watching my jersey tales. I'd love to know what you thought of them. So please comment below. So the crazy thing about being an Olympian and also winning Love Island, the chances of doing either are like 0.01%. Hiya, oh I'm Greg O'Shea and this is my Jersey Tales. Rugby was my first love, rugby was my first passion. I wanted to play for Munster Toma Park more than I wanted to play for Ireland. It says a lot. The chain came loose and I fell off the bike and I looked down, there was blood everywhere. I don't have a leg right now. Anthony Foley was the head coach at this time. God rest his soul. He walks into the physio room and uh, comes over to me. He uh, just digs me in the arm and goes, you are a F word Muppet. Winning Love Island was amazing and a ridiculous experience and so unique. And I loved it. But the thing was, I felt like I didn't do any work for it.